for thee. All things we'll be looking at today, Lord. We pray that you open our eyes, open our hearts to see amazing things in your word. We just commit this, Lord, in your hands and trust you. We thank you for what you've done already, leading us to worship you, leading us to think about you and meditate on you. And we just commit the rest of service into your hands. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Yes. We'll be taking a look. In, uh, if you want to already open to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And again, I'm not the pastor here. The pastor is Pastor Tommy. But he has asked me to uh, share this morning again on the theme that he's picked. Facing your giants. And in particular, the giant of unforgiveness. The giant of unforgiveness. Not letting unforgiveness ruin our life. Not letting unforgiveness take hold of us. Uh, if you remember, what he compared it to? He compared it to a ball and chain. That in the old times, the prisoners would have a giant ball, a heavy ball tied around them. So even if they somehow found a way to escape, they're not going very far. This is this huge, huge, heavy ball. And they just can't do anything. They can't do anything. And Pastor said, unforgiveness is like that. And we'll be taking a look at that. But first, before that, I want to share a little bit about what is God's Word? What is this Bible that's in front of us that we're about to open and that we're about to be learning from? And we're told many things about what God's Word is. And one of them is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 that I'd like to focus on. And I believe that will be on the screen behind me, if I can. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and we have a song for that as well, and I'd like to ask Jackie if she would to come up and lead that song. So, hear this song, and then join us at the same time, and maybe you can also want to hold on to this and use it. Go ahead, Faith. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any noble edge of sword, We try it together. So Hebrews 4, verse 12. Without me, sorry, I cannot sing. But all of us who are comfortable singing, let's sing together. One, two, three. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any noble edge of sword, it penetrates even to the body's soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Hebrews 4, verse 12. You can take your son. It's a gift. So what is this? It claims to be a sword. A powerful sword. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, it says the sword against the devil, our enemy. As I mentioned last week, I would consider him in a way, in a way... The only giant we have to face in this world. Every other evil would be related to Satan, our big adversary that the Bible says. So this is a sword to fight against Satan in Ephesians 6, 17. But what about this verse? This verse says the Bible is a sword pointed inward. Pointed inward. And this Bible judges us. Anybody like to be judged? Are you still willing and brave enough to read the Bible, to listen to the Bible? This Bible judges us. Tells us that we're sinners, horrendous sinners, deserving of what? Right? In another culture, some barbaric, crazy culture, you steal, they cut off your hand. We don't do that here. We're much more civilized than that crazy, barbaric culture. Other, you know, if you, whatever, do this, they do this to you. But what, how bad have we sinned? Almighty God says we deserve not to have our hand cut off, not to have our eye plucked out, that we deserve that. Every male has ever looked inappropriately at a girl, the Bible says, deserves that. But we deserve to go to hell forever and ever and ever. Are you that bad? Am I that bad? That's what the Bible says. And the Bible, for anybody who will listen, will 
demonstrate that. It will show that over and over and over again as lovingly as it can. It wants us to know the truth. The truth that can set us free. The truth that can capture our heart and completely take our life over. And before I just uh, stress that a little bit more, I want to say what the Bible is not. So the Bible is not a little plastic butter knife that we can use for all sorts of nice things. What do you want today? Want some peanut butter? I got a tool. I can give you some of this if you want. I can give you some of this. Is this a jam? Some kind of jam or something? What do you want? I got a little nice little tool. Right? It's not dangerous. Not a, the kid, Zion can play with this. It's not dangerous. There's nothing to it. It's definitely not a sword. Just a nice little tool. What do you want? Some psychology, some positive thinking? What do you want? I can use the Bible to give you whatever you want. That's not what the Bible is. So, so sadly, that's what it appears to be today. And the Bible even speaks of that. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, Second Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 2. Preach the word. Preach this Bible. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine anymore. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say... Whatever the engineers want to hear. What do you want this morning? I can help you out. I got a nice little tool here. We can find a Bible verse to give you whatever you want. What do you want? What do you need? What's your what's your need? What do you feel like you need today? I'll give you whatever you want. With my nice little Bible here, my nice little plastic butter knife, I can give you whatever you want. If I don't know how to give it to you, I can find a book that will teach me how I can give you this and that. I can preach this kind of sermon or that kind of sermon. What do you want? I got a nice little tool. That's not the Bible. The Bible's a sword. I spoke with Pastor yesterday, and I very much enjoyed preaching here. I think I've preached about eight or ten times in the last few months. It seems like uh, uh, constantly. And I've decided to talk to Pastor that uh, it's really not appropriate moving forward for me to be scheduled to preach here. And as I look at several that could preach here, I've asked Pastor, please don't schedule me. It's not that I don't like preaching. I love preaching. It's not that I don't want to serve. I, I would love to serve. But I think it's healthiest for the church, for the members of the church themselves, to preach. And so I've asked him, don't schedule me. You know, if any of you are scheduled and you have an emergency come up, you know, call me. If I'm available, I would be happy. And even at a moment's notice, I can step in and I can preach. But I think it's healthiest if uh, the church members themselves are preaching or the church members themselves are figuring out uh, how we want to move forward as a church. And so again, don't hear me wrong. I've loved it. I am so thrilled to be able to preach today. So thrilled. But I really want this church to uh, figure out what's healthiest for the church. And I don't think it's healthy to have uh, someone like me from the outside come in, especially as radical as I am with uh, some of my servants. I don't think that's the healthiest for the church. So again, I hope with whoever does stand here that we keep in mind, what's the Bible? It's a sword pointed inward. A giant, powerful, painful sword. Even this hurts a tiny bit, but not too much. But imagine if this was a sword pointed inward. It judges us. Today's sermon is going to be painful to a lot of us. It's going to judge a lot of us straight from God's word. But that's the Bible. It's a Bible, and it can also be sweet. It says it's as sweet as honey, right? Not, we can use it to get other stuff, but the Bible itself. Somehow, miraculously, this big, scary sword is also sweet to eat. How can that be? I don't know, but that's God's miraculous word. Powerful and judgmental.